This is my uh, old cluster, which has had a failed speedometer and a failed oil pressure and a failed water temperature gauge on it. And to show you that it's not moving, I'm going to do the self-check here. So I hold down on trip reset, turn the key to on, and release. And now as you see it going through the self-check, none of my gauges on the right side move. So this cluster uh, has some damage to it, and we need to replace it. There we go, continue on through. All right, so there, there the cluster's up. Everything works on it except those couple of gauges. You can see I can start up my Jeep, everything's fine. But, uh, but the speedometer doesn't move, the odometer still uh, counts upward, and oil pressure and water temperature don't do anything. So I'm gonna show you how to replace this cluster uh, with one from a donor vehicle and how to reprogram the mileage to match what your cluster has. So here's my old cluster, 386,198 miles, and we have a newer cluster that we're going to install here and reprogram to match this mileage. So this is the new replacement cluster just pushed in place so we can do some electrical checks. Um, if you notice, this one's got a little nicer and newer. The needles aren't so faded. It's a little cleaner. Uh, and let me show you the difference here with this one. Again, I'm going to do the self-check on startup. So hold down trip reset, key to on, release. And now, if you see going through the self-check, all my needles move. We'll keep on going through the self-check here. See the full sweep of the needles is apparent. Everything lights up. So this is a good cluster, and we're going to replace the other one rather than try to repair it. However, the problem is, this one only has 48,000 miles on it. So what we're going to do is read the EEPROM on the back of our original cluster with the correct mileage information for this Jeep, and with the correct VIN number, we're going to program it into here so that our mileage and our VIN matches. And some of you might want a 48,000 mile Jeep, but when you went from 380 to, to 48,000, it's a little bit more impressive and a little more legal to keep the original mileage in. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. So now I'm going to show you what it takes to clone my original cluster to my new donor from a junkyard. Uh, you'll notice this one is a little newer. The needles are still nice and orange. All the um, orange text on the back is still nice and orange. If you come over here, you'll see the more faded. So this one definitely has some more sun use on it. You can also tell this one came out of an older Jeep because it says unleaded fuel only up here and the newer clusters don't do that. Uh, one of the other small differences you'll see is the check engine is an engine and over here it's a check engine. So this is a little bit older. I think this one was originally out of a 98. I believe this one's out of an 01. So perfectly compatible. Um, they're all the same plugs on the back side. They work all the same. has all the same lights. So you can interchange any years, 97 to 01, on these Jeep Cherokees for the cluster. Now there's two ways that we can go about cloning from my old one to my new one so I keep my correct mileage and VIN number. Um, on the back side, all you have to do is pop off the rear cover. You don't need to take off the front plastic like I have. I took that off to make it a little bit easier to show you the differences. On the back side here, you'll see there's a lot of different things. You can leave the circuit board in, and what we need to do is we need to either remove this, clone it, or clone it, copy it, reprogram it. So this is an EEPROM. It stores the VIN number of the Jeep and the mileage information of the Jeep right in here. So I'm going to show you how to do this with a, a programmer and a laptop. Your other option would be to desolder that IC there, that, that EEPROM. You could desolder it from your original cluster, desolder the one off of your new cluster, and move it over. So if I was going to take that approach, and I had a good bench set up and a soldering iron, I would come over to my original one here, take off this 8-pin EEPROM, it's IC13 there. Notice the little dot in the top right corner that tells you which is pin number one. So I take this, I desolder it, I come over to my new one. And come in here and I'd desolder that, which contains the VIN number of a 2001 Cherokee and 
It says about 48,000 miles. I desolder that and I'd solder in the one from my, from my donor here with 384,000 miles. So that's one way to do this if you're not comfortable or don't want to buy the equipment to do this with a laptop. Now I do have a pro, an EEPROM burner, so what I'm going to do is come into this old one, connect to it, I'm going to download the information off of it, and then I'm going to come over to the new one, connect to it, and upload that same file into here. And by doing that, I'll just basically replace all the data that's there, and uh, we'll get the mileage cloned over, and get the VIN cloned over into my new one, and we'll have an exact replicate. Uh, perfectly programmed, perfectly legal, and we'll be able to keep seeing how many miles we can put on this Cherokee and hopefully get up to 400,000 soon. So I'm going to pull up my laptop and show you what to do there. So this is my test and programming setup that I have here. This is just basic Windows running this uh, EEPROM programmer. And the little bit of specialty stuff that we have here is this test clip. So instead of having to desolder that, put it on some pads, as you can see down here. Instead of having to do that step of it to read it, I have this nice little test clip. And uh, this test clip, you can buy them online, you can buy these programmers online. It's not too hard to come across. Uh, pretty, pretty cheap these days to do this stuff and pretty easy. So that test clip is called an SOIC8 test clip. If you see over here, I did a quick uh, Google image search on it, and you see a bunch of these out there including some with uh, cable connectors and you know some, some different styles that are easy enough to find. So go on Amazon, find what you want, buy it, use it. Now here I've got a program that's going to read the EEPROM. So we'll hook this up. This is all just USB off my laptop to the EEPROM programmer. I've got my adapter in here. You'll see it does make a note of which pin is which. So there's pin 1 at the top left of my programmer. You'll see my programmer shows you to put pin 1 at the top left. And then when you go to the ribbon cable on this programmer, you'll see it's got that red stripe. That's for pin 1. And if you look here on the IC, the pin 1 is on the top right, and they're all the same location. If I can get an angle on it here, you'll see there's a little, there's a little dimple on it. And that's on the top right. So when I orient this, I need to take my clip, get it on here, and I think I've got it on correct. Nope, nope, I'm not. One pin off. Okay. A little hard to see for you, but it's on there. And I'm going to come over here. Uh, this is just the way, way this particular program works, but I'm going to go device, read, read, and I'll hit cancel. And it looks like I'm not clipped on to it good because it didn't read it. Come in here and get this carefully clipped on. And I think I should be on that now. I know it's a little dark and a little hard to see. So we're clipped on to it. I'm going to come over to my computer. And I've already got my chip type selected here. I'm going to do device, read. And so there we go. We've now read the EEPROM information. Here's the mileage stored in it, 386,001. And for some reason it seems to store the last couple of digits, so you know, we may be up to 100 miles off, but we should get at least 386,100 something pro programmed in. You can also see here's the VIN number of my donor vehicle, or excuse me, of my original cluster. So what I'm going to do is basically save this data. Let's do file, save, and then we'll call this uh, just original or something like that. I like as found. All right, I'm going to save that. So that's been saved. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the donor cluster. All right, so I have my original as found file opened up and I'm ready to program into my new cluster. I'm going to go in here and hit program. Program. There it was successful. 
Uh, may take a couple of times to get your clip uh, connected up good. I tried this several times, took the clip on and off, and now it's finally going through. So it may take a couple of times to get the clip on and uh, get good contact so you can program it. So and there you see, I've got my 386,000 miles and my VIN number in here. And one way I can double check this is I can close this out, open up my program again, which just loads up a blank file. I'm going to do device, read, and I'm going to read it. And if you see, there it just read back my same information. So I've now cloned my file from my original cluster, saved it, backed up the one that was on this cluster when I bought it, and I've uploaded it to it. So now I have two clusters that are exact clones of each other. The difference is one has function gauges on the whole cluster. So I'll take this out and I'll plug it into the Jeep and show you what it looks like. I'm back out in the Jeep now. This is the original cluster, the old one. Uh, I installed it back in place so you can see. Powers up, 396,000 miles. All right, I'll turn that off and I'll swap in the new one. And if you notice, this one is the one that says unleaded fuel only up here. And I'll swap in my new one so you can see the everything comes up the same on it. This is the new cluster from the junkyard installed. You can see this is the newer one, the paint's nicer. And it doesn't say unleaded fuel only there right on the tachometer. So it's been cloned over from the original one that was not functional. And there we go, it turns on. You see my oil pressure's coming up a little bit. In fact, coming up a lot. It's probably an issue with my cinder. And there we go, so it's working. Uh, we know this cluster works good, so this has now been reprogrammed, and it's an exact duplicate of the broken one that was in here. So, there we go. Copied over, cloned, ready to rock, no odometer fraud. Uh, I'd also point out that this procedure is useful if you've got a Cherokee that's got the idiot lights, and you want to upgrade to a full cluster, and you don't want to commit odometer fraud, or you don't want to have mileage that's higher than what's on your actual vehicle. So that's another way that you can go about this, is if you want to upgrade, this is an easy way to upgrade it as well. Uh, you don't need to remove the clear plastic cover off all this. I just did that so we'd have less glare and less issues taking the video for it here. But don't need to do that. All you need to do is pop off that rear plastic cover once you get the cluster out. And that's all you need access to. It can be done out of the vehicle. So just get the other one out. You see I have my dash a little torn apart here. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to do that because if you're smart enough to figure out how to clone this over, you can figure out how to take apart your dash and get this out. So there you go. That's how you do it. Uh, please don't commit odometer fraud with this. Just uh, use this to maintain and keep your vehicle on the road and running right. So thanks for watching.